In November, I got word that the Pentagon was thinking about spending taxpayer dollars to facilitate elective abortions. This goes beyond what the law, which was passed here, the law allows. Now, I warned Secretary Austin that if he did this and changed this, I would put a hold on his highest level nominees. Secretary Austin went through with the policy anyway in February of this year. So I am keeping my word. The senator is blocking 184 top military promotions because he disagrees with the Department of Defense policy to help service members and their families access needed health care, specifically to travel to access abortion care. This week, many of us watched a video that has gone viral online of a young Navy Lieutenant JG. I have a lot of problems with this video. The coolest thing I did on board was to be able to participate in a LGBTQ spoken word night and I was able to read a poem that I wrote to the whole ship. And that was probably the culmination of the whole deployment. I hope we train our officers to prioritize their sailors, not themselves. I, I'll tell you why um, I'm particularly proud of this sailor. So her grandfather um, served during World War II, and he was gay, and he was ostracized in the very institution that she not only joined and is proud to be a part of, but she volunteered to deploy on Ford, and she'll likely de deploy again next month when Ford goes back to sea. Sir, um, we ask people from all over the country, from all walks of life, from all different backgrounds to join us and then it's the job of a commanding officer to build a cohesive warfighting team that is gonna follow the law, and the law requires that we be able to conduct prompt, sustained operations at sea. And so we have to, our, that level of trust that a commanding officer develops across that unit has to be grounded on dignity and respect. And so, if that officer can lawfully join the United States Navy, is willing to serve and willing to take the same oath that you and I took to, to put their life on the line, then I'm proud to serve aside them. And so let me just say this one more time, because I keep getting asked the same question over and over again. I will keep my hold. I will keep it on until the Pentagon follows the law or changes the law. It's that simple. And we have a single senator, Senator Tuberville, who is holding and blocking 250 military promotions right now, the head of the Marine Corps, the head of the Army, the head of the Navy, because he objects to the fact that a woman might get a paid bus ticket to get an abortion. If blocking these nominations continues, we will have no chairman of the Joint Chiefs, no commandant of the Marine Corps for the first time in 134 years, no Army Chief of Staff, and his colleagues who claim to care about national security are letting him get away with it. And I told you this over the last month to go down to the War College uh, and see General Andrea Tullis, who does an outstanding job. She allowed me to speak to all 1,500 colonels and majors, and that was, a, that was a treat. I mean, what leaders we got in this country. That was awesome. For nearly nine months now, the senator from Alabama has personally blocked the Senate from approving promotions of more than 300 military leaders. These are all leaders that Senator Tuberville voted for here in committee, but the Senator from Alabama is angry about a Pentagon health care policy, so he's decided none of the leaders can take up their jobs, the jobs that are needed to maintain our national security. The Air Force has the most senior officers who've been trapped by Senator Tuberville. Is there objection? Madam President. The Senator from Alabama. I object. Objection is heard. Senator from Alaska. Thank you, Madam President. And just for people who are watching that last uh, nominee, Fifth Fleet Commander. So you may have heard there's two carrier strike groups in the Middle East. That's the Naval officer who would be in charge of all of it. Right there. We could have put him in charge. Pretty important to have Fifth Fleet Commander ready to go and uh, just objected to. I'm not sure why. Again, we're, we're bringing these up one by one, which is what I thought my colleague from Alabama said he was good to go with. Later today, we will begin voting on the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, the Pentagon budget. 
Moving this legislation forward has almost always been a bipartisan issue in Congress. It takes on the responsibilities of funding our military. It protects our national security. It has been a bipartisan effort for nearly six decades. But last night, after midnight, Republican leadership decided to bring to the floor dozens of partisan divisive amendments. If adopted, these amendments would transform this bill and transform our military. It is quite literally a wish list of the right-wing extremist colleagues on the other side of the aisle. There's an amendment to end all affirmative action in our officer corps, something even our Supreme Court refused to do just a few weeks ago. There's an amendment to full stop end all aid to Ukraine at the very moment we're expanding, expanding NATO and working on protecting that democracy abroad on behalf of all democracies. But another one that they passed was a divisive amendment that prevents female service members in the military from accessing the reproductive care that they need and they deserve. Plain and simple, last night they chose culture war over national security. And they're doing so as part of a clear effort to prevent every single American woman from accessing care. It is part and parcel of a larger campaign to impose a nationwide ban on abortion. Last night, like I said, in the dead of night, the Freedom Caucus passed this amendment to stop the military from paying for a bus ticket, for a plane ticket for any woman who needs an abortion. Um, and it is proof of this bigger plan. In addition to this amendment that passed last night, we have amendments in the Appropriations Committee that are the same thing. 46% of active duty service women are in stationed in states where, that now either ban or very severely restrict abortion. They have no choice, they are based there. They have signed up to serve their country, they have been put on a base in Texas or in Alabama. That is not their choice, that is their duty. But the authors of these bills are not set on just letting the reversal of Roe sit and having states make their own decisions. The authors of these amendments are from Alabama and Texas, which ban abortion, including in the role of rape or incest. Why is this important? It's important because we need to hear what people are telling us. They are telling us that they will not stop with the reversal of Roe that happened a year ago. They will not stop when states like Michigan organize to make sure we have protections for women who want abortions. They want every single American, starting with our service members, to live under the same rules that they choose in their states. We need to hear what they are telling us and act accordingly. They are choosing politics over our women in uniform, choosing politics in the Senate over our national security. So please, I have never in my life as someone who served in the CIA, who served in the Pentagon, thought about voting against this bill. I believe it, I believe in it. It's about paying our military and getting them what they need. Please keep your culture war baggage out of national security. Thank you. Right now, the Senator from Alabama has imposed a hold on all, every single, senior military nomination and promotion. That means that one senator is personally standing in the way of promotions for 184 of our top level military leaders. One senator is holding up pay raises for men and women in uniform. One senator is blocking key senior military leaders from taking their posts. One senator is jeopardizing America's national security. He is worried that a service member might, might be seeking an abortion for themselves or for a family member. And he doesn't think the Department of Defense should participate in that in any way. Fine. The senator from Alabama can advocate for a bill to invade the medical privacy of every single service member. He can advocate for a bill that requires every commanding officer to do what no private employer can do, and that is to rifle through a service member's personal medical information. The senator from Alabama can seek to change federal law so that a commanding officer interrogates a service member with questions like, do you need time off because you're having trouble getting pregnant? Has your wife had a miscarriage? How many weeks pregnant are you? Was your daughter raped? These are not questions that commanding officers want to ask, nor should they be authorized or required to ask them. Like me, 
The senator from Alabama serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. And as a consequence, he has many more opportunities than most senators to influence DOD policy. He has many more opportunities to question witnesses, many more opportunities to receive briefings, and many more opportunities to influence the annual defense bill that Congress passes every single year to govern Pentagon operations. He has many opportunities that do not actively threaten our national security. He has not raised any individual objections to the 184 service members whose promotions are now held up in the Senate. And he has not raised any objections to the process by which these men and women were vetted and nominated. The senator from Alabama and I fundamentally disagree on the issue of abortion. We disagree on Department of Defense policies. But all of us should be able to agree that a blockade of the promotion of every single senior member of our nation's military creates unacceptable risks to our national security. And it needs to stop right now. As a member of the Armed Services Committee, as a U.S. Marine Corps Colonel, I know, we all know here in the Senate, America needs to have our best players, most combat-capable leaders, on the field. And right now, that's not happening. It needs to change. We all know there are current holds on our military. I want the American people to know, right now, 376 promotions to one, two, three, and four-star generals and admirals are being held. It is estimated by the end of this year, 89% of all general officer positions in the United States military will be affected by the current holds from Senator Tuberville. Either they, our members have to be forced to retire, positions not filled, an acting capacity will be unable to retire. This is pretty much the entire officer corps. This is hugely disruptive to readiness. The men and women in the military who've served our country so well for decades, probably the most combat experienced generation since World War II, have made huge sacrifices, multiple deployments, and now their careers are being punished over a policy dispute they had nothing to do with and no power to resolve. That's what's happening right now. And the idea that some of these officers are supposedly woke or desk jockeys, it's ridiculous. These are some of the most combat experienced generals and admirals we've ever had in our country. For months, Senator Tuberville has said, if individual nominees are brought up for a vote, one at a time, he will be fine with that. On September 6th, he said, quote, I'm not holding up nominations for being approved. They can bring them to the floor one at a time. Well, tonight, that's exactly what we're going to do. Individual votes on individual nominees, just as Senator Tuberville has requested. We have dozens. I hope the senator from Alabama meant what he said on this issue, and he backs our troops, who are true warriors and, yes, heroes, who, along with their families, have dedicated their lives to this country, lift, lift, risk their lives for this country, and have nothing to do with this current policy dispute. Nothing at all. One of the things that I can't understand is if you require our military to be subordinate to, to the people above them in the civilian world, why would you punish them for something they've got nothing to do with? All of these people, and if we need to call all 376, I'll be glad to do it. I'll get some rest this weekend and come back next week. I'm going to start with two. All I'm asking is to allow Major General Laura Linderman to get promoted. Now, I'll make that request in a minute. Major General Linderman is a two-star general. She got promoted to three-star because her peers, the military promotion system, saw in her leadership qualities. And after I read her bio, I now know why she got promoted. But the job she's going into, she's going to be the Deputy Commander Headquarters Pacific Air Forces Hawaii. 
She would be responsible for Air Force activities over half the globe. The command supports 46,000 airmen serving principally in Japan, Korea, Hawaii, Alaska, and Guam. That's got a lot to do with the Indo-Pacific Theater. She has 3,000 flight hours as a KC-135, KC-10, KC-46 pilot. In case you don't know what that means, she flies through air refueling tankers that our fighters and our bombers come up to to stay in the fight. This is some of the hardest flying in the Air Force. You got to have your stuff together because refueling at night is no easy thing. I've actually seen it done. I'm an Air Force lawyer. They shouldn't let me near an airplane and they didn't. But I can tell you this, this lady has proven herself time and time again, 3,000 hours, I'm sure most of it's combat, doing some of the hardest things any pilot can do in the Air Force, and she has got zero to do with what happened. I don't know what her beliefs are about the life issue. I'm pro-life too, but I don't want to start asking our military members litmus test questions. She deserves to be promoted. You're not going to change policy that she didn't make by denying her the ability to be promoted. We need this lady as a three-star yesterday to deal with the threats coming from China and that part of the world. Mr. President, I want to start by thanking my colleagues for their service in the armed forces of the greatest country ever. This is no institution in this, there is no institution in this world I honor more than the United States military. I am thankful to every veteran in this country. I also want to note that I respect my colleagues' strong pro-life voting records. The Republican Party has been the pro-life party for half a century. We ought to be proud that we stand for life. We stand for the most vulnerable of our society, the unborn. I know my colleagues here share that conviction. The, the disagreement we're having today is about tactics. Nine months ago, the Pentagon announced, announced by a memo that they would start using our taxpayer dollars to facilitate abortion. The Pentagon is now paying for travel and extra time off for service members and their dependents to get, to get, to get abortions. Congress never voted for this. We also never appropriated the money for this. There is no law that allows them to do this. This is a policy that is illegal and immoral. This is about life. And it's also about the rule of law. It's about our Constitution. It's about whether we make laws at the Pentagon or whether we follow the Constitution. This is also about the integrity of our military. The only thing in this world honor more than our military is the Constitution. We all swore to uphold the Constitution. I also feel very strongly about the obligation to uphold it every day in this room. I cannot simply sit idly by while the Biden administration injects politics in our military, again, injects politics in our military from the White House and spends taxpayers' dollars on abortion. Abortion is the most important thing to the Democrats that they have, and they won't negotiate it. One more time. Abortion is the most important thing the Democrats have, and they will not negotiate. This has been going on for nine months. Every day this continues is a day that Democrats think abortion is more important than the nomination and our military. Let me respond to my colleague respectfully. And we have courts. If you think they've done something illegal, go to court. That's how you handle these things. The Pentagon has issued a legal opinion I disagree with, saying this doesn't violate the Hyde Amendment. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. All of us are ready to promote her because she deserves to be promoted. 
She had nothing to do with this policy. Let me say it again. Everybody in this body could find an issue with any administration they don't agree with. And what we're going to do is open up Pandora's box. Today is abortion policy. If we take back the White House, we'll go back to the Mexico City policy, limiting dollars to be given to overseas entities that are engaged in the abortion business. Some pro-choice people don't like that. What would happen if they put a hold on all the officers because they don't agree with the Republican administration? There's a reason this, is, this has not been done this way for a couple hundred years. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Turbeville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Folks, if this keeps going, people are going to leave. Let me tell you how the system works. You have 18 months, I think, from the time you're promoted to pin on. And if you don't make that gate, your time and grade up or out rule kicks in. There's some people that are waiting to be promoted that if they don't get promoted soon, they're going to be out of the military. Now, how does that help anybody if they're qualified? There's not one senator in here that could not find a reason to object to an administration policy in the military. None of us. We could all find something. I just hope we don't do this routinely. Because if this is the norm, who the hell wants to serve in the military when your promotion can be canned based on something you had nothing to do with? She had nothing to do with this. If you think it's illegal, go to court. We have courts in this country. And it's simply a, in my opinion, a, an abuse of the powers we have as senators to say if there's something we vehemently disagree with, that we're going to use that power to hold up the promotion of over 350 men and women in our military. We each have things we might disagree with with the military, and some would come with deep personal convictions about their morality. But if each senator felt empowered to hold up all promotions in our military, unless we got our way on one of those issues, why our military would grind to a halt. This power is extraordinary that we're given as individual senators, but it's incumbent upon us to use it in a reasonable way and not to abuse it in such a way that we end up putting in harm's way the, uh, the capabilities of our, of our military and the well-being of our men and women in uniform. My colleague from Alabama has said publicly, hey, bring them up one at a time. And we're, gonna, we're asking for a voice vote. So that's a vote. So we're doing what he said. Not sure why he's objecting. Maybe he can explain that in a minute when I bring up another, a real hero, by the way. And look, what Senator Tuberville said about the policy in Austin and Biden on this uh, abortion policy, I, I fully agree with him. We should be suing to stop it. I think it's illegal. Um, and he's also right. Everybody uses holds. I certainly use holds. But the key is you put a hold on someone who typically has some kind of control over the issue that you're trying to fix. Madam President, I'm going to bring up my first nominee. Now, this goes to the issue of some comments that have come out during this. Well, these one-star and two-star generals are kind of desk jockeys, right? These comments have been made. They're not warriors, right? The real warriors are the captains, the sergeants. Look, I love the whole military. But the one- and two-star generals, I know a lot of them. It's my peer group in the Marine Corps. I'm a little bit behind them. I'm not going to be promoted. I'm getting out here probably soon. But I know these guys, and the idea that somehow these are desk jockeys, you know who these people were? The one and two stars that we're holding up right now? 289 of them. These were the captains and lieutenants who were going fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq after 9-11. The current commandant of the Marine Corps, by the way, every American should be praying for him. Big health issues. He's got a purple heart. Distinguished combat. These are the people who were kicking in doors in Fallujah, shooting terrorists in the face. And we have people saying they're desk jockeys and they're not warriors. That's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's insulting. 